Great. So you guys are going to need to uh, show your view from a certain sun angle and show the opening in the building. Um, so here's what's interesting about it, I guess, is if for some reason, um, let's make another one of these real fast. Sorry, I'm just going to try and cut a hole open real fast. So the idea here is that you're going to have a hole in your building. Oops. And I'll do a Boolean difference. That, take out that, right? So you want to see how much of that is really going to be visible at certain times of the year. I'll extend it a little further back so you can see a little bit more. All right, so it's going to follow this around, and you'll see how much into the space you can see from the sun angle. This, it's kind of the same thing as measuring, like, the, uh, the shadow. shadow, right? Except you're not actually grafting a shadow onto it. You just want to see how far into the building the sun will go <clears throat> from that point of view. So um, with this, uh, well, let's see. I need to turn. This should be running, actually. But I need to change these. Oh, my viewport was on my other page. All right, so um, so here's what comes up, right? It it comes up as this, which is the actual um, diagram. But it's also really far zoomed out. So I mean, you can theoretically move your map, uh, move your mouse in, but it's just gonna show you from the sun itself. So you kind of need to turn certain things off in order to really be able to see it. So you need to A, turn that off, and then you need to zoom your camera angle out. Now you want to be careful that you don't change um, the, the orientation. Like if you start rotating it like that, you're going to have to readjust this to get it back into the spot that you need it. And then just make sure you zoom out and zoom back in to centerize it a little bit. And then after that, it's really simple. You just need to turn that on and, and go with it there. So you just need to make 2D. If you're going to pump it out into like AutoCAD or Illustrator, <coughs> um, why is that not working? Hang on. Oh, yeah, it might not be visible. Hang on. There we go. Um, so make 2D would, would get your visible lines um, and you just pump that out and then you can start making your drawings off of it. Okay, does that make any sense? You guys know make 2D by now, right, in your studies. So this just gets pushed out to whatever other software you're going to process it in and then you can make drawings from there. Okay? So that's the angle for the sun. Yeah. That, that sun angle, and then you would label it too, so make sure you re record what each one of these is. Um, that one, where's my grasshopper? Yep, that one is on um, April 13th at noon. Okay, so I'm sure Iggy gave you a certain number uh, count of days and what time you need to show. I imagine he did. I hope he did. But anyway, so uh, so that's what you're gonna have to do. I think that's it. That white stuff is the label? Hidden lines. Oh, okay. Do we need anything else besides lines? That's up to you. Oh, do you guys actually want to see the post production side? I'll show you. Hang on. Yes. <clears throat> I'm gonna do it in Illustrator, but you guys may have other ways of doing it. So hang on, let me get it loaded up and then I'll show you. All right, so I got, uh, I got Illustrator up. I'm not sure how all of you are setting up your drawings. By now, a few of you are probably using Illustrator. Some of you, maybe not. But this is the easiest way to get vector format out of um, vector format and into raster format in a clean way. So um, <clears throat> in Rhino, whenever you've generated all of the views that you need, make sure you go into the appropriate view. In this case, it's my top view. And I'll copy, oh, sorry, don't copy that. Um, go to File, Export Selected, and you're going to call it, um, I'm going to go back to where it was. You're going to call it something that you can remember. So I think I called, or I had this set as, let me make a folder first. Week 9, Day 2. 
Did I not save my file from the other day? I think you did. Oh, I saved it in the other location. That's right. Okay. Um, so make sure that you save these things in a format that you can remember. In this case, it makes a lot of sense to save each raw diagram f uh, file uh, vector format as the time that that diagram corresponds to. So this would be um, April 13th at 12 p.m. or something like that. Okay. That makes sense, I think, right? Um, make sure you save this as a DWG. I guess you could save it as an AI file too. There are a few different ways you can do this as well, but I like to go with DWG. So I'm going to do a generic file format size. I can't go through all of presentations with you, so you'll have to kind of figure that one out, how you, how you need to do this, but let's see inches let's just do a 10 inch by 10 inch all right so I'm going to um, th there is something to consider with Illustrator since I have visible lines and hidden lines there um, is a consideration you need to make I need to open that file first desktop or sorry I'll go to CAD lab our class I'll show you. Um, open this file um, will actually retain the layers. Okay, if you open it, it retains both of these layers. That's very important for a certain kind of drawing, um, and in fact, most drawings. However, they're both there, they're just not really visible right now, so I need to first make them all black. So let me change them all to black lines. So there we have all of the lines we're concerned with on both of our layers. So if I copy that and I go back to my original one, um, I could show you placing it, but it's just going to come in on, well, actually, there might be a setting somewhere that allows me to place it with both. Yeah, well, there's probably a way to keep your layers with pasting it, but I've never found it. Anyway, so um, I can uh, paste it right here. But if for some reason your layers are not being pasted into this file, you need to go to this menu, okay? And it's all the way down here. None of you can really see this right now. It says paste remembers layers. That's, that's going to um, basically anytime you paste something, it'll remember all the layers and bring it into that file, okay? That's so useful. what's that? That's useful. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. All right, so here's the difference, right? We have visible lines and hidden lines. Your uh, visible lines are going to need to be very thick. So if you click over here, it'll select all of that layer. And then um, just assign it a proper thickness. Maybe I'm kind of exaggerating right now, but so that you can see it on screen. But anyway, that's your visible line, right? So you can see the, the building itself. If for some reason you want to see your hidden lines, which frequently you don't, um, without them, it looks like that. Okay, with them, it'll look like this. So those hidden lines will need to be thin. So I'll make them like a 0.5. And then you go over here to make it a stroked line. So that makes them dashed. Okay, I'm not going to go through all of the details on that. I think most of you know it by now. The other thing that I think you should consider is that since this is a diagram, it's trying to communicate a certain thing. And so um, I usually suggest highlighting the thing that you are communicating. So in this case, um, on layer one, I'm actually going to highlight where there is a problem with the sign. Okay, so I'll just um, grab my line. I think I'll just do it as red, I suppose. And I'm going to just draw my lines from anchor point to anchor point around this whole thing. Now you won't really see them right now because there really isn't anything there. Um, if you turn that off, you'll see it. They came through as dashed lines. It doesn't, just because that's what I had set up, it doesn't really matter. But I'll select all those. Um, I don't want it to be dashed. And uh, I'm going to use the live paint tool to fill it in. It's hotkey K. And it's also um, right here. But you click that, and then you select a fill color, like red, and then you fill it in. 
Okay, so that's how you do fill-ins with polygons in Illustrator. Very simple, hugely supportive of diagrammatic documentation. Okay, so if nothing else that you learn for Illustrator, just learn the things that I showed you. How to change your lines, how to make them dashed, and how to make filled-in polygons. It's that simple, really. Um, so, so this layer comes back on. I can do a number of things with this. I can make it um, translucent if I want to kind of lighten the, whoops, I need to select it first. And the red shows the yeah, no, uh, this is where you're actually, this is where in the building it's show, it getting blasted with sun. Okay. okay, that's the uncomfortable area. Okay? So it's fairly simple, um, I think. Huh? Well, yeah. I mean, just follow along with my video again and you'll know. <laughs> No, um, it, it really is very simple. If you if you do this with one diagram, and you don't just need one diagram, you, if you do it for one, you already know everything you need to know. And it's going to support your education throughout all of architecture school, even professionally to a certain degree, but not quite as much. But, um, but you are going to use a workflow like this very frequently, and so you should get used to it and practice it. And this is this is the bare minimum. You're going to learn this, and you're going to learn way more than this. Okay. In fact, have you taken uh, 221 yet, or no? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that class is uh, not two. Actually, not 221. What's the other presentations class number? 202. No, that's uh, that's modeling. Um, but there's a presentations class specifically, but yeah, that should cover this. 102. 102 and 202? Or, yeah, 102. Okay. Yeah, so that would be the class where you learn the this to a great a greater degree. Okay? Any questions? So would you just uh, label it the, ang the sun angle at a certain degree? Or yeah. At a certain day? Yeah, you want to make sure you label it what it is. Okay? You're going to add shadow to it? 